Well, that was unexpected. Hey everyone, Kenji here, and what I wanted to do today was do a full vlogging test to see whether the iPhone 12 Pro Max can actually hold up to do a decent quality vlog. Now, at the end of the video, I'm actually going to include the footage from my full tests of the vlog, but after reviewing all of the footage, I was extremely happy with it. I wouldn't say I was ecstatic and this will replace all DSLRs or all mirrorless cameras because they won't, but the iPhone 12 Pro Max is a very capable camera when it comes down to producing a decent vlog. Now, I'll just to go over my settings really quick and you can actually see this inside the final video that I'm gonna put at the end as well. So in order to get this phone to produce a quality that I was looking for for the video, I really had to maximize everything out of this phone. By that, what I mean is that I was using the best camera on the phone, which in my opinion is the wide camera on the back of the phone. And that camera has a 1.6 aperture. So I was using that camera and I, <clears throat> and I had the ISO all the way down at 30 and I had the shutter speed down at one over 48th of a second because I was using uh, 24 frames per second for the video and I was shooting at 4K. So since I was using the 180 degree rule for video, I really couldn't go any lower than one over 48th. So I really was, was maximizing this phone's capability for low light performance by using the lowest ISO, using the maximum aperture and using the uh, slowest shutter speed that I could. And in the end, I was actually very happy with it. Now, the reason why I decided to finally go with the rear camera is because when I was trying to do a test with the front camera, I, like I wasn't really that happy with it. It wasn't bad, but when I was trying to do a vlog with the, fr um, with the front camera, I did notice that, well, right off the bat, there's the huge benefit that with the front camera, you can use the screen to frame yourself up for the shot. And that is actually really, really nice to be able to frame yourself up in the shot. Cause right now for using the rear camera to get this video, I actually had to do screen mirroring uh, to my Apple TV, which I have playing on a TV right above my computer right now. So in order for me to get myself framed, I had to do uh, a uh, screen mirror to my Apple TV. And then, then that way I can actually have the rear camera facing towards me and then I can actually see where I was falling within the frame and making sure that my head was falling in the, in the upper third of the frame. You know, all the uh, various things that you wanna do when framing up your shot. So it's definitely kind of a pain in the butt to do that, but the quality I think is a lot better. The thing about the front facing camera, while it does make it easy to frame up the shot, the problem with the front facing camera is that it seemed to have just an infinity focus. It didn't seem to be able to pull focus uh, front and back. So when I was doing things with a product, you know, just like testing out if I were to do a vlog on a, on a particular product with the front facing camera, I'd be, t um, I could talk about a product. And then if I want to show a close up of that product, I would do this sort of thing and bring it much closer to the camera. Now, when I do that on the front facing camera, everything uh, really remained perfectly in focus. Now, it wasn't like when I brought this close, closer to the camera that this was too much out of focus, but everything in the background and in myself, um, everything really didn't change focus at all, which means that the front camera, I don't think can actually pull focus. I could be wrong about that. Definitely correct me in the comments below if if I am wrong about that, but for my testing, I don't think um, I don't think I saw that front camera being able to uh, pull focus. So in order to to really get a good quality uh, vlog, uh, or should I say, good quality video for a vlog, I really think you have to rely on the rear camera of this phone. And I would definitely say use the wide camera. Don't use the ultra wide. Don't don't use the telephoto especially if you are going to have some sort of low light uh, sort of vlog. If you're 
uh, you know, doing a vlog in the middle of the day and it's bright and sunny, I don't think it really matters which which camera that you use. Uh, you can actually get decent quality. But as you can see with my sort of setup in my studio, I have a more darker background. Um, I have a lighter foreground. And so I was really trying to test out to see which camera would work the best for me and for low light. And I hope that this is gonna be super helpful helpful for you guys. So what I wanna do is, is I just wanted to tell you what my conclusion was. My conclusion is if you want to do vlogs with the, the iPhone 12 Pro Max, you can definitely do it. It is very capable. I probably will be switching over to myself actually just because it is easier than using my DSLR. And I think you're gonna have a lot of success with it. Uh, if you have any questions, definitely feel free to ask it in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them. Um, I hope this was very helpful for you. And I'm going to swing right into the actual vlog test. And I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, take care. Hey everyone, Kenji here. And right now, what I want to do is I want to do a quick little vlogging test with the iPhone 12 Pro Max to see how good it actually does with vlogging. Currently, I actually use a uh, Nikon D810 with a 14 to 24 f 2.8 lens whenever I do my videos. And it's kind of an annoying setup to always have to use because I'm always trying to get the framing right and it's just a bigger camera. Uh, the quality is pretty good. I'm always shooting at 1080p. Whereas on this, I can actually shoot at 4K, which is kind of nice. But I wanted to see whether the small sensor on the iPhone can actually really compete with the DSLR when it comes down to these sort of vlogging videos. Now, I wanted to try to maximize the quality of the video on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So what I'm doing is I'm using the rear camera and I'm using the wide camera to be specific because the ultra wide and the telephoto they have uh, higher apertures and that's not really what i want especially considering that my particular youtube setup has kind of a darker background and i have very light uh, foreground so i wanted to make sure that the darker background doesn't look super grainy and have like a ton of digital noise inside there so that's the reason why i wanted to use the wide lens and not the ultra wide lens the wide lens has an f2 point, or sorry, an f1.6 aperture, and um, that lets in a lot more light than all the other cameras. And um, I also am trying to maximize all the other settings, so I'm using the lowest ISO that I can on this camera, and so that ISO is at set at 30, and I'm shooting at 4K, at uh, uh, 24 frames per second. And because I'm shooting down at 24 frames per second, that means that if I'm using the 180 degree rule, I can uh, lower my shutter speed to one over 48th of a second. That also allows in a little bit more light. So between having a low ISO, a low shutter speed, and also like the 1.6 aperture, I think this is gonna be the best that, that this camera can really ever do when it comes down to video in uh, low lighting. So. Let's actually do like a normal sort of vlogging test. I mean, well, right now, I guess I'm actually doing a vlog, right? But a lot of times with vlogs, you know, like you might actually want to show something off to the camera, whether it is a product or just something really cool. And when you do that, a lot of times what you are trying to do is you are, are uh, nice and framed up inside your shot, but you want to show a close up of whatever product that you are talking about. So if I were to, let's say, talk about this GoPro over here, what I would do is I would, as long as I would talk about it for a little bit, then I'd show a close up of it. So if I would basically just bring it up to the camera and basically show it off, I can show you to see, hey, this is like a really cool feature over here, or I really like this sort of thing over here. And when you're doing this, you wanna make sure that the focus is always pulling correctly and getting nice sharp focus on this as I'm holding it close to the camera. Now, when I take this away, you want the focus to snap back to my face. So when I pull it away, hopefully the focus then went straight back to my face and I am now nice and uh, in focus now. And I wonder how fast that actually does it. So let's actually do a quick test. 
So right now it should be focused on my face. I show this GoPro nice and close at the camera, maybe about five or six inches away from it. I pull it back and now it should be focused back on me. So GoPro, back to me, GoPro, back to me. And I'm really hoping that, that that's actually gonna be a decent test of you know being able to show off uh, products and things like that using the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Now, another thing is that I think when I was testing this out earlier is that when I was holding a product up like this about five or six inches away from the camera, the background was super blurred out. And that is actually really, really cool. Now, when it, when the focus comes back to me, I'm about uh, about 30 inches, maybe uh, 36 inches from, from the camera, about three feet. So when I'm that far from the camera, the background won't be nearly as, as blurred out. The nice thing is that when I was taking a quick look at it, the background was blurred out a little bit, which is uh, probably due to the 1.6 aperture. And that's actually pretty cool. Um, normally on my DSLR, on my D800, if I'm doing purely a talking headshot, I'll normally have the, the aperture set to around F4, maybe F5.6. But as soon as I'm doing any sort of like unboxing or talking about a product, I normally immediately bump that ISO up, sorry, not the ISO, I normally bump the aperture up to F6.3 to give me a little bit extra depth of field. So that way, when I'm talking about a product and, and I also have the product in front of me, kind of like this, that at least the product and me should both be relatively in focus. Now, if I'm at F4 or F2.8, it does let more light into the lens but that also creates such a shallow depth of field that a lot of times I will um, be out of focus or the product will be out of focus. And um, that's not really what I want. What I would like to be able to do with these vlogs is actually be able to, to um, utilize the full autofocus. And with the iPhone, I'm really hoping that I can use that, aut um, that autofocus. That way I can have a talking headshot and I can be talking to the camera, I will be nice and focused. And if I wanna show a close up of a product, I can do this sort of thing and have it focus directly on this. And then I can pull it back out and then it's gonna focus directly back on me again. With my previous setup, I couldn't really do that because I locked off focus um, to one plane of, of focus. And so that gave me a small depth of field that I could actually operate in. And it did blur out the background nicely. However, it didn't give me like a lot of range to be able to show things closer to the camera. Um, I did have an overhead cam that, that also showed, showed uh, things closer to the camera and gave a different perspective. But when it came down to showing really uh, close-ups of products and stuff, I couldn't really do that. So anyway, this um, has been the uh, test that I'm doing with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And I'm really curious to see what this footage is going to look like when I pull this into, into the computer and um, start to post-process it. So you're going to hear my thoughts soon.